In this video, we're going to talk about how to find inverses algebraically. So first thing, let's go ahead and look at what inverses are. So just in general, inverses are operations that undo each other, much like squaring and then square rooting, or multiplying by 2, dividing by 2, adding 7, subtracting 7. So algebraically, what we end up doing is we just switch the x and the y coordinates, and that's what an inverse does. And on a graph, it will flip the graph over the line y equals x. So this red line here is y equals x. So if we just reflect a function or a relation over this line, we'll get the inverse graph. And then in function notation, it's written as f to the negative 1 of x. Or if we're doing it of g of x or any other function, you'd use that letter. So f to the negative 1 is the inverse of f, or g to the negative 1 is the inverse of g. And so um, literally, you're just taking the x and the y coordinates and switching them for an inverse. So in a table, it, you're going to physically see that the x and the y just switch. So this was the point 1, negative 2. So in the inverse, it's going to be negative 2, 1. Or 2, 5 is going to go to 5, 2, and so on when you're in an inverse. So let's take a look on a graph before we get into the algebra. So in a, on this graph, I just want to plot um, the inverse. So graph the inverse of the provided graph by, um, by doing five points at least. You can do more than five points if you want to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find five points on this graphed um, portion here. I'm just going to write them in the table, and then I'm going to flip them around and plot the new one. So I would take the vertex because you want to take and get the actual curve of this graph. If you take five points over here, that's not going to give you a very good representation of the graph. So use any turning points. So this one is the point um, 9, 2. I would also try to find ones that are integers instead of decimals. So this one's 8, 1, and this one is 8, 3. So this is not a function. It doesn't pass the vertical line test. Um, the next nice one I see is 5, 0, and then 5, 4. So now in order to graph the inverse of this, you just literally take and flip these numbers around. So instead of 9, 2, we're going to plot 2, 9. Instead of 8, 1, it's going to be 1, 8, 3, 8, 0, 5, and 4, 5. And then we'll draw our curve. So go to plot these. So we've got 0, 5, we've got 1, 8, 2, 9, 3, 8, and 4, 5. And then you can just draw your curve. And you'll have the inverse of that original graph. Just a flip over this um, dotted line. If you could imagine folding that in half, that this would fold on top of the original. All right, then let's take a look at how to do inverses with algebra. OK, so there's kind of a process here. So the first thing that you're going to do is if it's in function notation, then you want to replace the function notation with a y. This is so that you can change all of the x's to y's and the y's to x's, because remember, an inverse switches the x and y. So we're going to actually physically switch them. Then you're going to solve for y. And then you're going to replace the y back with function notation, OK, with that inverse notation and function notation. So let's take a look at this on a couple um, equations here. So this first one, f of x equals 8 times x plus 10. And we want to find the inverse of f. First thing we're going to do is replace function notation with y. So we'll get y equals 8, x, 8 times x plus 10. Then we're going to change the y's to x's and the x's to y's. Then we're going to solve for y. OK, so now we want to get y by itself. So when you're solving, really think about doing order of operations backwards. So if I was to plug something in for y, I would first add 10 
and then I would multiply by 8. So deal with the 8 first by dividing by 8 to both sides. So you get x divided by 8. 8 divided by 8 is 1, so we're left with y plus 10. Then subtract 10 from both sides. Since those aren't like terms, you can just write it down next to each other. So x over 8 minus 10 equals y. Um, you could write this as 1 eighth x if you like the look of that better. So you could do it like this, 1 eighth x minus 10 equals y. I'm just going to leave it. Um, so last thing you want to do is just replace the, is put back into function notation. So the inverse of f of x is equal to x over 8 minus 10. Next one, so um, f of x equals x to the 1 half plus 5 divided by 7. Find the inverse. So replace the y, or replace the function notation with a y. Then switch the y's to x's and the x's to y's. Then solve for y. Okay, so again, think about order of operations. If you plugged in for y, you would then do the 1 half power, add 5, divide by 7. So the first thing you're going to do is get um, is undo the 7 by multiplying by 7. So you get 7x equals y to the 1 half plus 5 because times 7 divide by 7 is 1. Okay, then we're going to bring this 5 over. So we end up with 7x minus 5 equals y to the 1 half power. So when you have fractional exponents, okay, you can just bring both sides to the reciprocal of that, okay, because you want this to be y to the first power. So when we do power of a power, we multiply the powers. So when I put an exponent out here, I'm going to multiply these. So reciprocals multiply to 1. So that's what you're going to want to do. So on this side, we just get 7x minus 5 to the second power, because 2 over 1 is the same as 2. 1 half times 2 just gives us 1, so we get y to the first power. And so we'd have y by itself, so the last thing we need to do is just write it in inverse notation. So f, the inverse of f of x equals 7x minus 5 squared. Next one, so f of x equals the square root of x minus 2 over 8. So y equals square root of x minus 2 over 8. Switch out the y's for x's and the x's for y's. Solve. So remember, think about if you plugged a number in for y, the first thing you would do is subtract 2 from it, then square root, then divide by 8. So the first thing you're going to do is deal with the 8 by multiplying 8 to both sides. So you'll get 8x equals square root of y minus 2. So next thing you're going to do is deal with the square root. Okay, and you undo a square root with a squared exponent. So be careful with this 8x squared, because remember that's 8x times 8x. So it's 8 squared, which is 64, and x squared. Then the square root and the squared will cancel. So you're left with y minus 2. Then you can add 2 to both sides. So you have 64x squared plus 2 equals y. Final thing is just writing it in inverse notation. So 
So really be careful with this squared and square root, okay? So if you were to plug in a y here, right, then you this this is like a parenthesis, okay, underneath that root. So you would do this first, then square root. So you want to deal with the square root first so that you're dealing with the minus 2 last. So really think about those operations backwards. <clears throat> All right, for this one, when I replace like this, I'm just going to cross this off and put a y. So that I can just switch out the x, just write it down once. So now this becomes y to the 1 half plus 4 to the 5th power. All right, so think, think, think about order of operations here. Okay, so if you plug in a number for y, you'd first do the power, then you'd add 4, then you'd do to the 5th power, and the final thing you would do is multiply by 6. So the first thing you're going to do here is divide by 6. So we'd have x divided by 6 equals the quantity y to the 1 half plus 4 to the 5th power. So next thing you're going to deal with is this 5th power. So how do you get rid of the 5th power? You can do a 5th root. And you're doing it of this whole side. So make sure you get that whole side underneath there. So we have the fifth root of x over 6 equals the fifth root and the fifth power cancel. So we're down to y to the 1 half plus 4. Get rid of the 4 next. Okay, so this 4 is not under this root, okay? This root is already done, okay? So we have the fifth root of x over 6 minus 4 equals y to the 1 half. How do you get rid of a 1 half power? By bringing both sides, okay? to the second power. So then you have this whole thing, okay, it's just gonna look like this, just all in one color. Okay, so x over six underneath that fourth root, make sure you're minus, or underneath that fifth root, make sure your minus four is outside of this root. And then there's parentheses with that squared. And then 1 half to the second power is 1, so you just get y. And last thing, you'll just replace that with function notation. Okay, let's try another one. So this is going to be your y, so you're going to replace it with an x equals the third root of y minus 6 plus 4 all over 5. First thing you'll do is deal with this all over 5, so you'll multiply both sides by 5. So 5x equals the third root of y minus 6 plus 4. So you would deal with this whole parenthesis and cube root first. The last thing you'd be dealing with is the plus 4 if you were evaluating. So the first thing we're going to do is bring this minus 4 over, working it backwards. So 5x minus 4 equals the cube root of y minus 6. So deal with the cube root next. Okay, and so how do you undo a cube root? You put it to a cubed exponent. So we'd have 5x minus 4 all to the third power equals y minus 6 because the cube root and the cubed would cancel. Then you just have to bring that 6 over by adding 6 to both sides. Now be careful because this is all around a quantity, so this 6 can't go inside. 
okay? Because you have this whole thing that needs to be brought to the third power before you can do anything. So this plus six is outside. So remember, this would be three factors multiplied together. And then just switch out the y for inverse or for function notation. All right, let's do um, one more. So let's pick one of these. All right, so let's do this one. So again, this is the y, so I'll change that to an x equals the fourth root of four times y plus six with a minus seven on the outside. So think about what you would do first if you plugged in this y, if you had a number in here, you would add six times by four, do the fourth root, and then minus seven. So we'll deal with the minus seven first. So we'll get x plus seven equals the fourth root of four times y plus six. So we need to deal with the fourth root next by bringing both sides to the fourth power. So you have x plus seven to the fourth, fourth root and fourth power cancel. So you get equals four times y plus six. Divide by four. So we just have x plus seven to the fourth power divided by four equals y plus six. So then we can subtract six from both sides. So you just have that x plus seven to the fourth over four, and then you subtract six equals y or we're done now so I'll put it back in um, function notation f to the negative one.